Hi, this presentation will cover estimating function values by linear interpolation and linear extrapolation. It's a rather simple application of the things we've learned about lerping, about barycentric coordinates, and bilinear interpolation. So our general situation is, in the abstract, is we're given points x1 through xk in Rs, s-dimensional space. And we're given values for a function f at the points x1 through xk. So we're given the values of f of x1 through xk. And we're also given a u as an affine combination, alpha 1, x1, plus dot dot, alpha k, xk. This is an affine combination, which means that the sums of the alpha i's is 1. And our goal is to estimate the function value at the point u. And the method is just to set f of u estimated at right, equals est for estimated value, um, alpha f of x1 plus alpha, alpha 1 f of x1 plus alpha 2 f of x2 plus dot 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 alpha k f of xk. So the estimate for f of u is the same affine combination of the f values of the xi's as u is of the xi's. Notice that if u is actually a weighted average, then this is also a weighted average. So we have several situations to think about. So the first example is linear interpolation or lerping. So here we've got two points, x1 and x2. They lie on a straight line L. There's a point U someplace on the line, and U is lerp x1, x2, alpha for some scalar alpha, which means that U is 1 minus alpha times x1 plus alpha times x2. And then assuming we know values for f of x1 and f of x2, we then estimate f of U as lerp from f of x1 to f of x2 by fraction alpha. In other words, f of u is estimated as 1 minus alpha times f of x1 plus alpha times f of x2. And we allow here that u could be in, in the interval x1, x2, so um, it's a weighted average of x1, x2. We also allow the case where u is on the line L, but not inside the line segment from x1 to x2. And u is an affine combination, but then not a weighted average. If, if u is a weighted average, in other words, alpha is in the interval 0, 1, then we call this estimation, we call this linear interpolation or estimation of the value of the function f by linear interpolation. interpolation. Otherwise, with u an affine combination, alpha is outside the interval 0, 1. We call it linear extrapolation. So we're extrapolating values where if we know values for f of x1 and f of x2, we extrapolate to some u outside of that line segment to 
estimate a value for f outside of that. So as a second example, we have very centric coordinates. And here we have three points, x1, x2, x3, that form a triangle in some space of dimension greater than or equal to 2. There's a point u, which could be either inside the triangle or outside the triangle, but lying in the same plane as the triangle. So u has very centric coordinates, alpha, beta, gamma. So it's alpha x1 plus beta x2 plus gamma x3. And now, assuming that we know the values for f of x1, f of x2, and f of x3, we estimate f of u as alpha f of x1 plus beta f of x2 plus gamma f of x3. And if um, u is a weighted average, so it lies inside the triangle with alpha, beta, and gamma all in the interval 0, 1, then this is called estimation by linear interpolation. We are linearly interpolating between the three points. Otherwise, we can call this, we call it estimation by linear extrapolation. We're extrapolating from a values of the function on the vertices of the three points to a value of the function on a point completely outside the triangle. So this looks very much like the type of shading that OpenGL does on triangles. So this looks like what OpenGL does to shade or smooth a triangle. Uh, so what we mean by shading a triangle is we are drawing a triangle to the screen. When we draw a triangle to the screen, we give colors to each of the three vertices. And then the three vertices, of course, land someplace on the screen. The triangle then covers approximately some, uh, tr some uh, triangle of pixels on the screen. And we give intermediate colors to each pixel inside the triangle by averaging colors from the three vertices. And this looks like the same kind of thing. But actually, if you do it this way, it doesn't work well. So it doesn't work well to do this because of perspectives. So it doesn't work well with perspective. Um, in fact, this is what's known as the no perspective interpolation. It is, it is the, it is called in OpenGL no perspective. And no perspective is a keyword uh, um, for variables. It's a, quali it's a qualifier for variables. It's called no perspective in the GLSL programming language for shaders. Shader language, GLSL shader language. This is something that has to be invoked explicitly uh, using the keyword no perspective because it actually works very poorly by perspective. By default, OpenGL uses what's known as hyperbolic interpolation which does work well with perspective, and which we will cover in a future video. But this gets us started here. As you can see, I'm having some difficulties erasing the board, but be that as it may, let's move on to the third example. Which is bilinear interpolation.
So for bilinear interpolation, we've got an approximate rectangular shape with vertices formed by vertices x1, x2, x3, x4. And this patch has straight line boundaries and straight line cross sections, but it's overall a curved patch in general. And we'll only use interpolation of function values for in the bilinear inter interpolation setting, because it's dangerous to use extrapolation. But here we have u is going to be 1 minus beta times 1 minus alpha x1 plus alpha x2 plus beta times 1 minus alpha x4 plus alpha x3. And that is an alpha. And then f of u gets estimated as 1 minus beta times 1 minus alpha f of x1 plus alpha f of x2 plus beta times 1 minus alpha f of x4 plus alpha times f of x3. And again, it works well. This works good for, works well for alpha and beta in the interval 0, 1. In general, it's probably usually okay for alpha and beta to be a little bit outside the interval 0, 1, slightly less than 0 or slightly more than 1. But if you allow values well outside the interval 0, 1, things really just go wrong and shouldn't be done. So an application of this is for texture maps, which we will talk more about texture maps in other videos. So for texture maps, we want to estimate color in between pixel centers. So estimate color at sub-pixel locations. So the picture is something like this. I've got a texture map is just an image of some type. And as such, it's always a rectangular array of pixels, which I'm drawing here as a 4 by 4 array of pixels. So each of these things is a, you know, these are pixels. And each pixel has some color, say, at the center of the pixel. So this might be a color 1, color 2, color 3, color 4. And then we want to estimate the color off the pixel centers. So we're thinking of this, maybe we want to estimate the color at that position that's off center of a pixel. And we're going to estimate it as the average of the four surrounding colors. So we'll just think about bilinear interpolating on this as a rectangle. If we go fraction alpha this way and fraction beta from top to bottom, from bottom to top, I should say, right? This gives us a position, a subpixel location indexed by alpha and beta. And so then alpha and beta give a subpixel location. And then we estimate the color at that subpixel location by using bilinear interpolation. And what do we do to bilinearly interpolate? We take the colors C3, C4, C2, and C1, and then use the usual formula for bilinear interpolation. Um, this will get done when we're mapping a texture map whose pixel centers don't correspond precisely to pixel centers on the screen, and vice versa when there's screen pixel centers that don't correspond precisely to 
uh, pixel centers in the texture map. That's everything for this presentation. Thank you very much.